Hey, what's up, YouTube? So, real quick, I just got done filming a little bit of stuff on this uh, Baxter oven. It's a, a giant carousel-style bread oven. Um, I mean, the thing's got to be seven, eight foot tall. It's, it's ginormous. You can literally climb inside, as you'll see. You can climb inside, stand up in it, work inside of it, whatever you got to do. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer. On these ovens, I am not an expert. There's a lot I don't know on these ovens. Uh, so forgive me, the footage is somewhat choppy, but I so rarely get to work on these, let alone film them while I'm working on them. I figure whatever film I can get, whatever footage I can get, whatever I can show anybody on these would be beneficial to somebody. At the very least, if you're bored, you want something to watch, you want to see what a giant oven looks like, you want to see me crawl out of a giant oven, almost like this oven is given birth to a technician, that's what you're going to see. Forgive me for my lack of knowledge on these, but I just wanted to give you guys something cool to look at today. So enjoy it for what it's worth, whatever it's worth to you, enjoy it. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Email will be down below here, all right? Have a good day, guys. We'll talk to you soon, all right? All right, guys. So today we are looking at a giant bread oven at a well-known sub shop. The problem is it's flaming out or purging every once in a while and it'll stop our carousel rack on the inside. So the first thing we're gonna do is just go through, double check all our connections, double check our ignition module, our chain tension, double check a few other connections that can possibly lead to um, this particular issue. First thing we're gonna do, right above you here, Gary, there's a micro switch or excuse me, there's an airport, not the kind with planes in it, but an actual little port where air is pulled in and it proves that there's actually air flowing through here. We're gonna double check that in a second here. Once I get this mile long screw out. First thing we always do, right up there. That port right there is usually plugged with dust, but today it's not. It's nice and clean, so they're doing a good job with their maintenance here. Our filters look decent, so that's not our cause. And whenever I'm working on something like this, always check your connections. These ovens get very hot, they vibrate a little bit. There's always a chance you have a loose connection in here somewhere, but these aren't too bad at all. Chain tension isn't bad. Um, another thing on these, some places this happens to more than others, they sometimes drop bread pans in here. Now this location would never do that because they're much better than the other locations. But you want to make sure there's nothing blocking this carousel from moving around. It doesn't look like there's anything obstructing it, so we're good there. Just a few minutes, we're going to open up that trap door and climb inside and look at our, our actual spark assembly. There's our two gas ports. Of course, our gas valve down there. Those grates right there. Make sure those are clean. If not, you're not gonna get a proper flame, and it will flame out. So, and you wanna pop that open, Gary? Hopefully there's no bodies in there like last time. All right. What I've seen before too, this, um, I forget exactly what it's called, but this brick surface here that just helps even out the flames. Sometimes those will get misaligned. It'll jam, jam them up on one of these carousels. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice and dirty. That's gonna be fun to climb into. All right guys, let me put this camera down, climb inside, and we'll get started. All right guys, so I'm about to climb in here, but before we can do that, I have to line up that bread oven 
because my giant fat body won't fit underneath there. So, we are going to turn our motor. There's a hand crank right there that the Amish use. But I don't know if my impactor is strong enough to do this. There we go, just go nice and slow. You see it slowly moving. My battery's gonna die doing this. Right about there. That's what I want. Now, we can begin our journey of climbing inside. Let's take a quick look around. We are now inside this oven. Grab my flashlight here. So, what I'm doing in here is I need to inspect my pilot assembly, make sure my flame rod is clean, make sure the sparker's lined up, all that fun stuff. So, that's what we're doing right now. And what I am doing, I lined up this bread tray, this carousel, so that I am just laying on top of it. Because if you don't, you're going to have a hard time getting to this pilot assembly. There we go. That. I bet they squeal a little bit when they start up. I bet they squeal a little bit when they start up. Is there Zerg fittings on them? I believe so, yeah. Alright, guys, there is our pilot assembly. Keep in mind when you pull these out, be wary of this pilot tube because if there's a lot of tight, if there's a lot of tension on that pilot tube, you'll break it right off. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean this this flame rod right here. I'm doing all this before I fire it up and verify symptoms because I don't want it to be hot. Because once it's hot, you're not gonna want to be inside this oven. So. Let's get after it. Now it's hard to see this connection. It's a push on connection. Make sure it's tight. Connection's nice and tight. Still the best way to clean a, uh, a flame rod. Oh, very nice. That's much better. Alright guys, these are my legs. I am still inside this oven here. I wanted to point this out real quick. This is the, the main bearing that holds this massive carousel in place. If you'll notice, it's cracked and badly worn. Let's see if we can get up around the sides here. Yeah, there we go. There's a little bit better view of it. So, that'll need to be changed out. That itself is not an easy task. So, we'll let the facility manager know about that and see what he wants to do with it. Alright guys, here's a better view of this 
bearing and it's egged out shaft or egged out bearing. Yeah, it's not supposed to have that big a gap in there. So that's something that needs to be addressed much sooner than much later. Another thing we're going to check is the brick alignment down there. It's not terrible. Those bricks are just used to help dissipate the heat and even it out a little bit. Yeah, right down there. Not bad. It doesn't look like they're catching on anything. Usually if they are, obviously you'll see like broken pieces of brick and whatnot, but that's not terrible. So I think we're going to make our way out of here and fire it up in just a minute. There's our exit. Alright guys, I'm out of the oven. We're going to fire it up with the door open. To do so, you have to bypass this little switch. It's a little micro switch. This thing just goes in there, pushes a little, a little lever, and closes that micro switch. So, jam a piece of cardboard in there, put some tape on it, you're good to go. We fire it up. And we have a six minute delay as it goes through, checks all of its, its probes, its pressure sensors, its safety things, everything like that. So we're going to stand here for about six minutes and just watch it. I'm going to keep an eye on that oil stain down there though. Hopefully our motor's not going bad. You can notice the right side of that carousel sagging a little bit as it comes around. Look at it in comparison to the bricks. It's definitely got a sag to it. Wow. That sounds really bad. So what we're looking at right now is a, a clicking or ticking noise that we found while I was running. The unit shut off a few random times. Real, really not sure why it shut off, but uh, we suspect that it's one of these these relays in here clicking or something. So I don't, know, I don't see anything uh, out of the ordinary. Like our contacts points aren't aren't bad. Say we fire it up and see if we can see which one is clicking. Quick update here. Still haven't figured out the ticking noise. However, our oven still randomly stops. So we checked our brushes inside the motor. Those appear to be fine. I'm waiting for it to kick on so I can do an amp draw and compare that to our 2.5 amps. I have a feeling that bearing that we saw inside there is dragging and our motor is just uh, over torquing and our motor control is shutting it off. So, we'll wait and see. I guess we've been running for about 15 minutes. Still pulling about 1.15 amps on our motor. Our ticking noise has dissipated. I'm guessing that maybe it had to do something with my brushes that I cleaned off inside the motor. I have the temperature turned down right now, down to about 150, so there's no flame, but we're just waiting for this thing to stop and listening to this horrible howling noise. 
My fear is that bearing is going to completely give way and that carousel is just going to drop. Once that happens then, then they're going to be screwed, obviously. Awesome. It's like an old haunted mansion. Alright, looks like we're all set here. Three, four, good to go.